Le Marie defines the elements, a short essay written and read by Bruce Mills, otherwise known as the obligate pedestrian. Nicholas Le Marie, 1645 to 1715. Cordes Chimie, 1675 by Le Marie. I am working from the third English edition translated from the eighth edition in the French, which is very much enlarged beyond any of the former, printed by R.M. for Walter Kettleby at Bishop's Head in St. Paul's Churchyard, 1698. And Nouvelle Edition, Revue, Corrigé et Augmenté d'un grand nombre de notes et plusieurs préparations chimiques qui sont aujourd'hui de usage, et dont il ne fait aucune mention dans les éditions de l'auteur. Par M. Baron, docteur en médecine et de l'Académie royale des sciences, 1757. And Physica Subterranea Profundum by Johann Becher, 1635 to 1682, and Georg Stahl, 1660 to 1734, published 1738 first published 1669. Much of the following comes directly from the section on the principles of chymistry from A Course in Chymistry by Nicholas Lamery. Lamery invokes a universal substance that is everywhere and whose form gives everything, but is not directly observable. Then he talks of mixed bodies as being those that grow, such as minerals, vegetables and animals. This feels very much like a vitalistic theory of materials as well as also sounding something like quantum field theory. The universal spirit is diffused through all the world and produces different materials depending on which pores in the earth that it settles in. It is not possible to observe the universal spirit with human senses. In experiment, the chymists found five different types of substances being water, earth, spirit, oil and salt. From this they inferred the existence of the corresponding five different principles which are given the same names. There is the material, water, found in a river, and the principle of water, which is not available in its pure form any more than quarks are, and so on. This smells like the concept of ideal forms of Plato and the concept of morphic resonance of Rupert Sheldrake, the latter being that memory is inherent in nature. Once something has existed, the universe remembers it and it is more likely to exist again. The former is rather like the idea that those memories exist but are fixed rather than changing over time. There is a similarity to both of these in the collective unconscious of Carl Jung. However, Jung described this in terms of an emergent effect of ultimately biochemical process, while Sheldrake requires that it occurs independent of any such process. The chymical principles described by Le Marie are divided into active, being spirit, oil and salt, and passive, being earth and water. The intended intuition is that the active principles cause a reaction to occur and the passive principles hinder the reaction. Le Marie says, the spirit which is called mercury is the first of the active principles that appears to us when we make the anatomy of a mixed body. It is a subtle, piercing, light substance that is more in motion than any of the others. It should be plain that Le Marie does not here specifically mean mercury the metal, but some other entity that would be called the principle of mercury, or rather the principle which was inferred from looking at the behaviour of the metal. It might have been less misleading if the chymists had chosen different names for the principle and the material that inspired the principle. Mercury causes things to grow, but also causes them to be more likely to be corrupted, rotting, or rusting, or corroding. It is more present in animal and vegetable matter than in mineral matter. Again, clearly this is not the metal called mercury in the 21st century. Both Lamery, 1645 to 1715, and Becher, 1635 to 1682, are merging the three principles of sulphur, salt, and mercury with the four elements of earth, water, air and fire. Lamery retains earth and water, approximately speaking fire and sulphur are merged to become oil by Lamery and Pinguis by Becher. Mercury became spirit by Lamery and fluida by Becher and salt retained by Lamery became Lepidia by Becher.
This appears to lead to the conclusion that the theories of Lamery and Becher are homologous, that they were working along the same lines at about the same time. However, Becher did much less to develop the theory as he had significant other interests and Lamery, born only 10 years later, died 30 years later and in the 18th century and was more involved in the revolution brought about by Boyle, Freund and others. Also, Lamery became part of the chain of thought that led to Lavoisier, while Becher became part of the chain of thought that led to Priestley in the clash at the end of the 18th century that is styled in the 21st century as being between alchemical phlogiston and chemical oxygen. However, I would see this as being that they were all part of the web of thought that led to the chemistry of the 19th century. The end of the 19th century was the culmination of a classical chemistry and it is still viable in the 21st century, aided rather than replaced by quantum theory. Prior to Lamery, a common notion was that minerals were incubated like moulds in the warm high pressure depths of the earth, rising to the surface over thousands of years. This is probably better thought of as a failure to recognise how complicated the chemical process of life is, rather than a belief in the complexity of the process of mineralisation. Several writers at that time believed that life would turn out to be a fairly simple process. So the idea that minerals were like life was more the idea that life was like minerals, just a smidge more complicated. Contemporary objection to the idea of manufacturing gold, a phrase that is a better description than the idea of magically transmuting lead into gold, was, more often than not, not based on the principle that gold was an element in the 20th century sense, but on the principle that it was difficult to impossible to gestate gold in a human-made laboratory furnace over a few days or weeks when it took nature thousands of years at higher temperatures and pressures. And indeed, while the idea that it was in the earth was incorrect for gold, it was correct for diamonds, and the essential idea of the formation of gold was correct when it is ported to the context of stellar nucleosynthesis. So while some context and details are different, the difficulty of the process and the belief that it required great temperature and pressure than were available in the alchemical furnace were correct. I have no objection to such a theory in and of itself. Lamery is writing in a manner that is fairly clear, just as pseudo Geber did more than three centuries earlier, and he fits his ideas to practical work in the laboratory as pseudo Geber also did. My objection here, and I do have an objection, is to the claim that Lamery is a chemist as opposed to an alchemist. Lamery is seeming to make no distinction between alchemist and chymist other than claiming that the chymists are less posh and more clear in their writing, a distinction that seems unjustified historically, other than during the 1600s. And there seems to have been not that much distinction between chymistry and chemistry at the time he wrote either. Just a linguistic nuance the chemistry was expecting the list of elements to grow. As mentioned, Lamery is putting forward a theory that has much more in common with the four elements, earth, water, air and fire, and the three principles, sulphur, mercury and salt, than it does with the 19th century chemistry using hydrogen, helium, lithium and so on. While Lamery is said to eschew spagarism of Paracelsus, and at the time he could have been perceived as such, Looking back over the centuries, he is far more closely allied with Paracelsus of decades earlier and Geber of three centuries earlier than with the Lavoisier decades later and Quantum three centuries later. The idea of an active principle is a material that is driven off a mixed body by heat. The first to be driven off are the spirits and the next are the oils. To fully understand what is going on here, it is necessary to recognise that the identification of the principle of sulphur with the 20th century element of sulphur and the principle of mercury with the 20th century element of mercury is violently anachronistic and out of context. Lamery states of mercury that it cannot be drawn pure no more than the others I am going to speak of, but either it is involved in a little oil that it carries along with it and then may be called a volatile spirit such as the spirit of wine or rose or rosemary or juniper or else it is detained by some salts which check its volatility and then may be called a fixed spirit as the acid spirits of vitriol, alum, salt, etc. End of quote. 
Mercury is described as Mercury or the spirit of mixed bodies. The idea is that the principle of Mercury and the metal Mercury are not the same thing, they are two different uses of the same word. The principle is named after the material that has some of the properties of the principle. While the alchemists sought materials that were more and more pure versions of the principles, it was fairly common to acknowledge that extracting entirely pure principles into a jar in the laboratory was not possible. This idea is remarkably similar to the concept of quarks, which make up baryonic matter, but are never observable in practice on their own, that is, in their pure form. Another case which occurred in the 13th to 19th century until the electron was isolated is that of the principle of negative and positive electrical charges. Extracting the negative charge from a small block of material made the material more and more active and potentially dangerous and reactive, making it impossible to produce a pure block of positive charge. We now know that if one had a gram of pure protons in a solid block, it would explode with such vigour as to not only destroy the proverbial city block, but to go as far as to destroy quite a decent sized city. It is, however, not something that can be achieved as the energy required to produce and contain it is rather large. The interest of alchemists in the pure form of a principle or elementary material is often presented as though it showed an emotional or poetic irrational interest in the materials. But the same interest exists today in chemistry with attempts to generate pure forms of materials to be used in everything from medicines to digital electronics, as well as being important for general research into the behaviour of materials. A central theme here, just as in particle accelerators, is to expose the material to higher energy conditions the alchemical furnace, and to try to drive it apart into components that cannot be driven further apart so as to find the fundamental unchanged or at least simplest building blocks of matter. Once their behaviour is understood, the behaviour of the rest of the material should follow by the application of logic. Mercury then is spirit, oil is called sulphur. In particular, Lamery states, the oil which is called sulphur by reason of its inflammability is a sweet, subtle, unctuous substance that rises after the spirit. This is said to cause the diversity of colours and smells according to its disposition in bodies. This gives them their beauty and deformity, uniting together the other principles. This also sweetens the acrimony of salts, and shutting up the pores of a mixture hinders it from corrupting either through too much moisture or cold. Wherefore many trees and plants that have a great deal of oil are wont to last green much longer than others and can resist the extremities of ill weather." End of quote. Lamery also mentions that the sulphur cannot be drawn pure either, a point that should be fairly natural to the ears of the listener by now. The earlier distinction between volatile spirits being mercury and oil and fixed spirits being mercury and salt is now made again, but with a combination with spirits as something that floats on water, or with salt as something that will still rise with distillation. Lamery says of salts, Salt is the last of the active principles, which remains disguised in the earth after the other principles are extracted. It is the fixed incombustible substance that gives bodies their consistence and preserves them from corruption. This causes the diversity of salts, according as it is diversely mixed. There are three different salts, as the fixed, volatile and essential. The fixed salt is that which remains after calcination, which is drawn thus. The calcined matter is set to boil in much water for dissolving the salt, then the dissolution is filtrated, and when all the moisture is evaporated, the salt is found dry at the bottom of the vessel. The salt of plants drawn after this manner is called lixivious salt. The volatile is that which easily rises as the salt of animals, and the essential salt is that which is obtained from the juices of plants by crystallization. This last is between the fixed and volatile. End of quote. It is a bit hard to work out in modern terminology what materials Lamery is referring to. However, the ambiguity of the older language in terms of the newer does not fundamentally reflect any lack of rigour in the earlier. 
21st century chemistry is generally more effective than 17th century chemistry. However, this is not to do with any foundational lack of rigour or logic on the part of the researchers of the 17th century or lack of experimental skills. Indeed, the indications are that they could be quite adept at chemical process in the laboratory and their logic was based on the observations. The student of chemistry in the 21st century is often much more removed from the actual experiments and typically does not see so well what is in front of their eyes, looking as they are through the filter of a sophisticated and abstract theory that they have taken on board as a kind of unobserved reality that is assured to them by their training. Lamery then introduces water. Water, which is called phlegm, is the first of the passive principles. It comes in distillation before the spirits which are fixed, or after them when they are volatile. It is never drawn pure, but always receives some impression from the active principles. And this causes it to have a more detersive virtue in it than the common water. It serves to separate the active principles and to bridle their motion. End of quote. The word detersive is perhaps best replaced by cleansing in 21st century English. Again, the issue is that the material is being defined directly in terms of its behaviours in experiments. This idea was continued with the actual accepted principles or elements changing over time to become the standard chemical test for the presence of different chemicals and elements. And then there is the earth. The earth, which is called caput mortem, or damned, is the last of the passive principles and can no more be separated pure than the rest, but will still retain some spirits in it. And if, after you have deprived it of them as much as you are able, you leave it a good while exposed to the air, it will recover new spirits again. End of quote. Note, there is a minor conflict here between the French edition and the English translation. The English version states that the earth is called caput mortem or terra damnata, translating to Latin what Lamery said in French, but also adding the word terra, or earth. Caput mortem means deadhead, and the symbol for this is the stylized human skull. All of the above makes the most sense in terms of considering the heating of vegetable matter, for example a piece of wood. At first, fairly volatile substances are driven off as gas, others as liquids, then heavy liquids, and often at some point in the process a pleasant smell is generated, for example, as used in incense. Lamery emphasises that the principles are only experimental principles. This is the same point that later writers such as Patterson Muir in the 19th century made, just using the word element in place of principle. That which we have so far failed to compose. The same idea was presented by Pseudo Geber in the 14th century, but using the phrase strong mixture rather than principal element. Patterson Muir, in the article Are the Elements Elementary, in the mid-1800s, also emphasises the principle that the elements are experimental and the specific set might change with further experimental study. This idea resonates with the discussion in the 20th century over which particles are fundamental. For example, at one time, the proton was assumed to be fundamental, but later to be made up of three quarks. As of the early 21st century, the quarks are generally thought of as fundamental, but some aspects of string theory would suggest otherwise. Lamery then claims that the earlier writers that he dismisses as being mere philosophers absolutely claimed elementary nature of these substances. Again, this seems to be more a clash of terminology and exact decomposition of the ideas, rather than that Lamery has any valid point. The thrust of this little essay is intended to be to describe some details of the actual theory that was proposed around the three principles and the four elements to demonstrate its experimental nature and to show how it formed a foundation of the chemistry of the late 17th and early 18th centuries. During the 18th century, the work of Priestley, among others, gradually discovered a greater variety of essentially elementary materials, which, with the focus of Lavoisier on conservation of mass, eventuated in a singular and fairly well-justified unique set of elements, leading to the culmination at the end of the 19th century 
just as radioactivity and spontaneous transmutation were detected and the world moved into the use of quantum electrodynamics as the foundation of chemistry. Lamery warns, the word principle in chemistry must not be understood in too nice a sense, for the substances which are so called are only principles in respect of us, and as we can advance no further in the vision of bodies. But we well know that they may still be divided into abundance of other parts which may more justly claim in the proprietary of speech the name principles. End of quote. Note, as far as I can tell, the French were not distinguishing the words chemistry and chemistry. So corps de chimie might as well be course in chemistry as course in chemistry. The 21st century word in French is chimie, using an I instead of a Y, which is similar to English chemistry to chemistry, but it is unclear that the distinction of the same magnitude was made. In the pages following, Lamery makes some statements about the experimental nature of the principles versus the elements. Here he echoes a distinction that I have seen made in other literature, that the principles are the properties that the materials can have, while the elements are the things that the materials can be. In this sense, the principles are a science demonstrative, or experimental science, while the elements are a matter of abstract theory. This is a curious anti-resonance with the common way of viewing this in respect in which it is claimed that the elements were experimental science and the principles abstract nonsense. The main conceptual issue here is that those following the idea of principles often analyse the experiments in terms of the ability to transfer a property from one material to another. However, over the centuries, it turned out that the properties of materials were a complicated result of combinations and interactions of the abstract elements, or at least such a less direct theory has more empirical success. What this means, placed in the conceptual context of principles, is that the observable principles are not transferable on their own, but are always transferred in combinations, rather like inheritance in biology. Those combinations that can be transferred are elements.